శ్రీ గురుచరిత్ర చాప్టర్ వన్ శ్రీ గణేషాయ నమ శ్రీ సరస్వత్యై నమ శ్రీ గురుభ్యో నమ యాజ్ లాంగ్ యాజ్ వీ డు నాట్ రియలైజ్ ద సుప్రీం సెల్ఫ్ ద యూనివర్స్ లుక్స్ ఫ్రైటనింగ్ యాజ్ ఎ స్నేక్ దట్ ఈస్ ఇల్యూజర్లీ ప్రొజెక్టెడ్ ఆన్ టు ఎ రోప్ ఇన్ డార్క్నెస్ ద మూమెంట్ ద సెల్ఫ్ ఈస్ రియలైజ్ ద ఇల్యూజరీ నేచర్ ఆఫ్ ద ఫినామినల్ యూనివర్స్ ఈస్ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్డ్ let us bow to the guru who is the reality of the nature of reality awareness bliss the non dual reality which manifests itself as the many to the erring intellect but which is realized to be one is indeed the para brahman and lord datta is it the one who in his mercy manifested himself as lord datta the son of sage atri and anasuya to enable his devotees kartavir arjuna and king yadu to realize the self he again manifested himself as shri pada shri vallabha and shri nrsimha saraswati to uplift his devotees even now he responds to the call of his loving mortals at the confluence of rivers krishna and bhima and has been perpetuating his mission the one self who manifested himself as the multiple universe and enter its form is lord datta himself he can be realized through gnana or knowledge those who transcend the duality of likes and dislikes born of sensory experiences of objects through the power of discrimination gets liberated from the strangle hold of ignorance to such a one only the supreme lord is the object of love it is for the sake of such discriminating ones that the lord assumes the sporting form of a human being in every age he thus manifests himself and restores righteousness through the adherence of his own duties enjoined by the scriptures and then shuffles off his form in this cosmic cycle of the day of brahma 28 cycles of the four yugas had passed in the shweta varaha kalpa having known that even the cosmic deities become unresponsive in this wicked age of kali he again manifested himself he exists in the subtle form of a renunciate sage manifesting his miraculous and divine sport at the confluence of the rivers krishna and amaraja the glory of this manifestation of the divine is indescribable even at the moment of his birth he uttered the mystic syllable om and by the mere touch of his hand he transmuted iron into gold even before he learned the alphabet he taught the vedas to his disciples and expounded the vedanta to his parents in his childhood even at that young age he visited the holy places of pilgrimage practiced yoga and restored the tradition of renunciation to its pristine purity by his own practice he cured the intestinal illness of his devotee by making him partake of the very food which is prohibited to such by medical science he transformed the tongueless man into a elegant expounder of wisdom he terminated the poverty of a brahmin by his mere blessing and he enabled him to visit three holy places in the wink of an eye he revived the dead made a barren cow yield milk he conferred the vision of his cosmic form on his devotee trivikrama and humbled the pride of the learned he made a devotee of the low caste recite the veda by his mere blessing he terminated the widowhood of a lady and expounded the subtleties of karma yoga to a devotee he made a withered twig grow into a tree and blessed a barren woman with offspring by his mere look he cured one of leprosy he presented himself in eight forms simultaneously at the houses of his eight devotees on the holy day of deepavali the festival of lights he transformed a farm that was prematurely harvested into one of plentiful yield he performed and has been performing such miracles it may be possible to count the stars in the sky the grains of the sand on earth and the drops of water in the ocean 
but not the infinite divine attributes of the lord though he is the spirit without any form he miraculously assumes a form and enters his devotee's heart through the gateway of his hearing and cleans his heart and liberates him in this very life from ignorance the devotee who has transcended the dualism of joy and sorrow whether he is free from his body or not will surely attain perfection the moment he works out the store of his karma called prarabdha this is a truth which cannot be understood by those who do not bask in the association with the will and who are thus blinded by the force of their infatuation and preoccupation with sensory pleasures those who lead their life according to the form of righteousness that is enjoined by scriptures in accordance with their innate tendency and those who have faith and devotion in the deities and saints those who thus ever live in the light of their discrimination are free from the false sense of agency in actions and free from craving for the fruits of their actions are the true renunciates who attain both divine divine security in life and liberation afterwards having listened to such a noble and glorious account of the manifestation of shri guru a brahmin by name namadharaka sharma who deillusioned with the cravings of mundane existence ever lived devoting all his life to the contemplation and glorification of the noble qualities of the guru arrived at the confluence of rivers bhima and amaraja thereby he realized the lord with the single object of directly contacting the divine self of the guru he worshiped lord ganeshwara in order to ward off impediments in his endeavor and goddess saraswati in order to obtain right knowledge then at last succeeded in achieving his object by glorifying the guru who reached out to him in the form of the story of his divine support recounted by a living human form namadharaka glorified the divinity of shri guru thus oh all knowing one don't you know me oh witness of the whole universe don't you see me oh all pervading one don't you hear my cry or even though you have heard me do you choose to ignore me if you know what i am why does my despair still persist if you have listened to my cries why does my misery persist in case you ignore me is it proper for you to ignore your devotees it is not proper for you to mean that i should resort to some other deity for you are the one spirit and lord of all deities moreover you are our ancestral deity how could i leave you and seek the protection of some other deity i know that you are my lord or you being the supreme do you ignore me because i am but one among thy myriad creatures just as the king is known to all his subjects but he does not know every one of them individually this may be possible in the case of a little knowing mortal of a king but it cannot be so in your case for o oh lord you are all knowing if you say that you would grace me in return for my service or through offerings of charity it is not proper he who does good only in return for some service cannot be a true giver such a one is indeed a selfish giver just as the sun affords light and the lord of clouds showers rain without expecting any return you have bestowed your grace on sage dhruva and vibhishana and bestowed the highest spiritual state on them in a similar fashion may you bestow on me your blessed vision the nine types of treasures and the eight supernatural powers are your servants can you need anything what is it that i can offer you you are ever full what can i do for you even ordinary kings on earth ever protect their servants o oh, you sustainer of the whole universe you have already received my worship why do you ignore me o oh lord of all deities are you pained at some failing of mine 
it is not proper for you who is the abode of grace to be so even a human mother does not mind if a child kicks her with its feet always the one or the other of the human parents ever protects their children you are the father and the mother of the whole creation if you who is my father and mother are not merciful to me i am helpless it is not proper for you to say that you have withheld your mercy from the from me owing to my failings for all my actions are prompted by ignorance such is my innate nature i am doomed to do all those things which i condemn as bad do you say that i should undo them by the contrary righteous action if most of my actions are holy and only a few of them are unholy it is possible for me to rectify them through prayas chitra penitentiary actions indeed even such penitentiary actions are afraid of me even as a cow is afraid of a tiger how is it possible to remove the blackness of black gram even so how can japa and dhyana purify me who is the very form of sin oh lord there is no sinner like me and there is no destroyer of sin like you therefore give up your indifference towards me oh lord and protect me who has no other refuge even flint seems to melt with kindness at my cry of despair what happened then to your mercy o merciful lord why don't you protect me who is a slave of death he started fasting unto death one day he wandered about and finally fell asleep under a tree he had a blissful dream in which he saw a great wandering yogi he had matted hair and besmeared his body with holy ash he wore a tiger skin and he wore rosaries of rudraksha in his neck and on his arms the very sight of the holy one had completely quenched the blazing fire of his longing to shri shri guru with tears of joy namadharika prostrated before the holy one bathed his sacred feet in his tears of joy and wiped them clean with his own long hair the yogi raised him up blessed him by keeping his hand on namadharika's head and put holy ash on the latter's forehead shri dattaya gurave namaha shri shri pada shri vallabhayai namaha shri nrsimha saraswatyai namaha